Eric the Red is a legendary figure from Viking tales and one of the most influential Nordic explorers in history. With his fiery red hair and matching beard, Eric the Red was known for his hot-tempered personality, which led to his banishment from both Norway and Iceland after a fatal brawl. But little did he know that this would mark the beginning of his epic journey towards one of the most daring explorations in the Middle Ages. Driven by his thirst for adventure, Eric the Red set sail towards the unknown, exploring the vast expanse of Greenland. It was his relentless spirit that led him to gather a group of brave men and women to establish the first European settlement on Greenland, a settlement that would last until the 15th century. Through his fearless leadership, Eric the Red built a community that grew to an estimated population of 5,000 at its peak, forever leaving his mark on the pages of history. This is Viking history with Magnus. Eric Thorvaldsen was born in Rogaland, Norway in 950 and was the son of Thorvald Asvaldsen. He would later become known as the Red because of his red hair and beard, but also for his hot temper. He used a method of conflict resolution that subsequently became something of a family tradition. Because Eric the Red's father, Thorvald, was banished from Norway for manslaughter and had to flee with his family, including ten-year-old Eric, and settled in Hornstrandir in northwestern Iceland. Early Vikings had settled in Iceland around 870. By the time Eric arrived, almost a hundred years later, much of the land was already claimed. Marriage and Family Eric married a woman who came from a wealthy family, giving him a large farm in Iceland. There, he cleared land and built a home he named after himself Eric Stadir, meaning Eric's town, something that becomes a recurring theme for Eric. In 970, he had a son, Leif Eriksson, who would also become a famous explorer and be the first European to set foot in America, Leif's sister, Freydis who followed him to America, was almost killed by the natives when she famously exposed her breasts and wielded a sword, daring the natives to fight a woman when the natives attacked the Viking camp. Impressed by this, or possibly scared, the natives turned around and Freydis would live another day. I made a video about that. There's a link in the description below. Medieval Icelandic tradition relates that Eric the Red and his wife had four children. A daughter, Freydis, and three sons, the explorer Leif, Thorvald, and Thorstein. Unlike his son Leif and Leif's wife, who became Christians, Eric remained a follower of Norse paganism. While Eric's wife took heartily to Christianity, even commissioning Greenland's first church, Eric greatly disliked it and stuck to his Norse gods, which the sagas relate led his wife to withhold sex from her husband. I guess some things never change. Here, archaeology strengthens the credibility of the story because of a detail. Near what are believed to be the ruins of Eric the Red's farm, but not too close to the houses, lay the remains of a small sod church surrounded by a cemetery. Following in his father's footsteps, Eric also found himself banished for a time. Around 982, some of Eric's slaves accidentally caused a landslide that destroyed his neighbor, Valthjof's house. In turn, Valthjof's friend, Ijolf the Foul, killed the slaves. So in retaliation, Eric killed Ijolf and home gang Hrafer. This prompted Ijolf's kinsmen to demand his banishment from Hokadal. You think that he is guilty? Raise your arms. and Eric was exiled for three years for the double murder. Eric now moved to Brokey and Ixney Island in Iceland. While living here, the hot-tempered Eric once again found difficulties with his new neighbor. This time, several people, including the two sons of Eric's neighbor, were killed. Eric went on trial, was found guilty of murder, and once again banished. The banishment was also for three years this time. However, unlike last time, he was now also banished from Iceland.
Being banished, both in Norway and in Iceland, Eric was running out of options. This prompted Eric to start one of the most impressive sailing feats of the Middle Ages, a journey that would cover almost 10,000 kilometers. Eric had heard about Gunbjorn Ulfsson, who was driven off course by a storm to the coast of present-day Greenland in 877. He did not land, but told about what he had found when he returned to Iceland, which he had named Kronland. Eric decided to search for this seemingly uninhabited land, and he left Iceland and headed westward in 982. 983, the settlement of Greenland. In the summer of 983, land was spotted and he landed on the west coast of Greenland. Eric renamed it Grundland, or Greenland in English. Eric and his explorers found that this new land had a similar climate to Iceland. Fjords froze over in winter, but contained rich vegetation during the warmer summers. The renaming was not a coincidence. This was what we today would call a PR coup, because Eric knew that this would make the land sound more attractive and bring more settlers from Iceland, something it soon did. He spent the winter on the East Coast in a place he named Eriksey, which translates to Eric's Island. In the spring, he moved further inland and headed to a neighboring fjord that he once again named Eric's Fjord after himself. During the summer, Eric and his men explored uninhabited lands to the west and named many different areas, most of them starting with Eric. Because why not name everything after yourself? Eric was definitely not shy about self-promotion. When his exile was ended, he sailed back to Iceland in 985. In total, Eric the Red had sailed over 9,656 kilometers in only four sailing seasons, making it one of the greatest maritime feats achieved during the medieval period. When he returned to Iceland, he brought with him stories of the lush land called Greenland, and Eric's PR campaign worked. His salesmanship was very successful, as many people lived on poor land in Iceland and had trouble surviving. There had also been a recent famine, something that made many people convinced that Greenland held great opportunity for them. Eric knew that the success of any settlement in Greenland would need the support of as many people as possible. 985. Colonizing Greenland Eric spent the winter in Iceland and left the next summer to go colonize Greenland, and numerous people went with him, a total of 35 ships. They brought with them numerous animals, including horses, cows, and sheep. However, only 14 of the ships made it to Greenland. In a storm, the ships were separated. While some made it back to Iceland, others had less fortunate outcome and sunk. After their arrival, two colonies were established, the Eastern Settlement and the Western Settlement. Several smaller settlements were also established in places in between these two areas. Eric the Red made a home for himself and his family in the Eastern Settlement at Bratalid, near present-day Narsuswak. Eric was soon elected leader, holding the title of Paramount Chieftain of Greenland, and became both greatly respected and wealthy. During the summers, when the weather was more favorable to travel, each settlement would send an army of men to hunt in Disco Bay above the Arctic Circle for food and other valuable commodities such as seals, used for rope, ivory from walrus tusks and beached whales. The settlement flourished, growing to 5,000 inhabitants spread over a considerable area along Eriksfjord and neighboring fjords. However, one group of immigrants which arrived in 1002 brought with it an epidemic that ravaged the colony, killing many of its prominent citizens. Nevertheless, the colony rebounded and survived until the Little Ice Age made the land very difficult to manage for the Vikings in the 15th century. The climate change, along with pirate raids and conflicts with the Inuit, became other factors in its abandonment. Nonetheless, the colony had lasted almost 500 years, making it one of the most successful Viking colonizations. The Death of Eric the Red The two sagas, which are primarily about Eric the Red and his closest people, Greenlandinge Saga and Eric the Red Saga disagree when it comes to Eric's death. According to the Greenlandai Saga, 
He died in an epidemic in the winter after Leif's journey to Vinland. However, in Eric the Red's saga, he is mentioned as alive a full five years later. Eric the Red's story is not only one of adventure and conquest, but it's also a testament to the resilience and adaptability of the human spirit. Despite facing numerous setbacks, including being exiled from his homeland, Eric never gave up on his dreams of finding a new place to call home. And he succeeded beyond his wildest imagination, establishing the first Norse settlement in Greenland and creating a thriving community that lasted for centuries. But Eric's impact went far beyond just the founding of a settlement. His voyages to Greenland helped to expand the Viking Empire and Eric's son, Leif Erikson became the first European to explore North America. Leif had invited his father to join the voyage to America. However, according to legend, Eric fell off his horse on the way to the ship and took this as a bad sign, leaving his son to continue without him. There is no doubt that Eric the Red was one of the most badass Vikings ever. There are not many, if any, that can match the distances he traveled, the adventures he had, and his impact on history. When Eric died, legend has it that on his deathbed, Eric the Red was asked if he wanted to be buried in the Christian or pagan tradition. He reportedly replied, I don't know, surprise me. I hope you found this presentation interesting and that you want to learn more about the fascinating history of the Vikings. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. I have many more exciting stories to share, both about Vikings and other historical topics, and I would love for you to join me on this journey. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.